I've been working on the Lone Silver Town Tunnel campaign for the last two years now. Um, so what I thought we'd do is we'd talk a little bit first about where the tunnel is, what the proposal is. I know there's many people in this room who have been through this before, and actually there's um, a lot of people here from South East London who are very familiar with the proposals and possibly familiar with our group. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, here we are. Okay, so this is um, uh, in case you haven't heard of the Silver Town Tunnel, like I say, I imagine most people in the room do know what it is. Um, there is the proposal is at the moment these two yellow lines here represent the Blackpool Tunnel, which you all know and love. Um, the idea is to build a second double bore tunnel here going this way, pretty much underneath where the cable car is at the moment at the end of the village peninsula. Um, what we're concerned about, amongst other things, and I think it's fair for me to say that air quality is kind of one of the strings to our boat, but not the entirety of our argument, is that um, we're all largely from South East London. We're trying to expand our group north of the river as much as we can. But one of the things that's really obvious to us is that southbound traffic through the Blackwall Tunnel at the moment leads to massive congestion all the way down this area as you go towards down towards Kent, down further south. Um, we see massive queues and massive traffic jams in those areas a lot of time. And so that observation uh, in conjunction with the, uh, the, the plans to put the tunnel in place led us to do to take part in three air quality surveys. And I'm going to on those there. They were in July 2013, February 2014, and we just <coughs> a third one at the beginning of this year over here. Um, this, this map shows you the results of our second air quality survey. Our third one was more in the east, uh, more sort of east London up this area. And um, our colour coding here is a tiny bit um, more detailed than, 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 than you might sort of immediately think. What it does is that anything of darker than that colour there is over the 40 microgram um, per meter cube limit that we've already spoken about in terms of uh, nitrogen dioxide. So the, our methodology and the way we did this and how we how we came to do the survey, very, very similar to the story that we've been we just been telling. We got an awful lot of support from Andrew. Uh, we collected together a team of volunteers who shimmied up lamp posts in order to do this. Um, and this is the results of I think our second, but possibly our first and second together. I think this is our second air quality survey. So you had a hundred sites there? A hundred sites for our second survey, yeah. Um, and we had, <coughs> we had about 25 volunteers, they worked in, because we're piratical and, and, and we don't give a stuff about health and safety, we're only teams of two. <laughs> Crazy like that. Um, so people were walking up and down ladders in all these places uh, around there. Um, one of the things I just want to quickly touch on are some of the challenges that this area has and represents. Um, like I say, our, our argument is not actually what entirely about air quality. It's partly to do with congestion, it's partly to do with noise pollution. It's partly to do with the economics of crossing the river because one of the things in TfL's plan is that when this tunnel is built, it will be told, and also the Blackboard Tunnel will be told as well. There are also plans to get rid of the free crossing of Woolwich that's currently here. Um, and we think that's going to have knock-on effects all the way through East Greenwich, all the way to Rotherheim. Um, so, one of the things uh, that we wanted to, that I, I just want to touch on quickly, is that um, where we are in the process of building this tunnel. The, because this is a nationally significant infrastructure project, this is a special term for things that are so incredibly important to the infrastructure of the country, they have a special sort of streamlined planning process. There is a consultation that TfL is the proposer of this tunnel that you start running in autumn of this year. So that's where we are at the moment. One of the requirements for that consultation process is that the council, as a responder to that, comes, uh, gives them some idea of whether this is environmentally acceptable or whether this would be accepted in the area. 
as this is run, this is part of Greenwich Council's area remit. Um, so we spent a lot of time trying to move Greenwich Council's position with some limited degree of success. I'm not going to say that they're entirely on our side, but, but we have been able to move the position to some extent. One of, if you talk to Greenwich Council, they will tell you that the reason why air pollution is so terrible in this part of the world is partly because of the topology. So the argument is that the peninsula in particular and uh, sits at the bottom of a group of hills that run around here, which is true-ish, and as a result, the, the pollution settles in the bottom. This would be a fantastic argument if only what it meant was that people thought, oh, well, if it's more fragile environments, then perhaps we should treat it in a more fragile manner and make sure we don't pack in too many things. You probably all know the Greenwich Peninsula. Right here is the world's most successful and attractive um, uh, events venue at the O2. Uh, there's a plan to build a uh, cruise ship terminal at the end here. Uh, within the next 18 months down here, we're going to have an IKEA built. Just a bit further along, as you move into Charlton down here, we've got a new Marks and Spencers and um, Sainsbury's with huge car parks. In fact, it's all out of town shopping pretty much all the way down this road. Massive, great big. Um, areas full of things. And we're beginning to think we're just getting to, or I think there is a general understanding of the world that we are getting to a tipping point of just how much you can pack into this peninsula area without getting some really serious uh, sort of consequences as a result. So, back to our results. As you can see, anything darker than that colour is above the legal limit, that's red. Anything that is black is more serious. Again, I think we took it to 70. I think it's anything above 70 micrograms per meter cubed is colored black. So there is some really desperately unhealthy air um, in all of this region around here. Just one thing I should point out is that the, uh, the west side around Deptford No Cross, we worked with a group called Don't Dump Deptford's Heart, who were campaigning against uh, the, the, the Big Thames sewer, the Thames Water Water Bill. So they had concerns about Deptford Church Street. Um, that area would also be affected by the Siltown Tunnel um, as well. So they did a lot of intensive work down there, which is why you've got a, and, and the air is horrible down there. I think that you know, the, some of the worst pollution was at the No Cross, um, and that's there that would also, also be affected by Siltown. So that would, yeah, we've worked with other groups to kind of to broaden the scope of what we did. And it's, it's helped both of us because that helped them you know, put their work in a larger context and it gave us a, a bigger reach when we were able to measure up to the Rob that time as well. I think the deputy people also were making representations of the pollution barrier council. So as are the leading problems there. Yeah, I'll get to a lot of concern about air quality. Oh sure, but we, I mean, we're using this, to, I mean, because we measured into Lewisham as well, as well as into the other boroughs, so we're using this not just to, to get Greenwich, but Lewisham, Townham, which knew Bexley as well. When you mentioned the retail offer yeah. um, on the peninsula, you are aware that Next and Primark um, are coming, and that they are currently putting in repetitive um, planning applications for increased parking allowances, and behind that, there is going to be um, an application for a 150 people banqueting hall venue, really? which it says that it is likely to generate a lot of traffic movements, but that doesn't matter. Is this, so is there's the one, even more going in. Is this the one that's likely to end up being a church? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, we should we should probably I, I should probably say that, that um, both Darren and I and actually Jim as well. <laughs> you're members of CCRA, I think. We're members of the Charter Society. So there's, there's quite a lot of kind of charter specific planning stuff going on. I, as far as the tunnel goes, and, and uh, there is also we haven't mentioned uh, a thirty thousand seater stadium just here which people drive to every Saturday as well. So there, there is a lot going into that area. Um, 
I won't talk much about the mechanics of how we put that up or, or what we did because at Leave we have given a lovely overview of what the process is and, and how that works and I think everybody in the room has probably um, taken part in uh, an air quality survey. But uh, what I did want to talk about is uh, some of the things that the air quality survey brought for us and what we learned from it. Um, and the first thing and the most obvious thing is we are eight people in a room that just happened to sort of join together. And, and the reason we got together in the first place as a, as a committee group was because of the first air quality survey that we did back in July of 2013. Um, that's how I joined the group, that's how Jill joined the group, I think. Um, and that's how we got together our first set of four people. As we've gone on to do further air quality surveys, it's been our best way. We, have, we haven't found a better way yet of engaging people who really want to be able to help. Just being able to give some of the people something concrete to do so that they know that they're involved in your work against a proposal has meant, has meant a real, has made a real difference to us. Um, as far as our publicity goes, uh, one of the things that, and I think we have again already spoken about this, um, but one of the things that really helped us is having photographs of people putting up the tubes on beautiful sunny days. Um, my husband is now famous across the whole of Greenwich because he was standing on a ladder putting up the tube. Um, and also, what we were able to pick out in our press in our press releases um, is that a lot of this, particularly around here down the bottom of Charlton, a lot of this pollution was very close to existing primary schools. Um, and that that had a, a, a specific effect on young children, their development, the, the development of their lungs. Um, we, uh, as far as at sort of the size of our campaign at the moment, we have about 550 email subscribers. We have 1,700 Twitter followers, something along those lines. Yeah. Something, uh, something along those lines. So we are doing okay at getting our message out. We tend to um, we tend to think at the moment that if we have this amount of information on nitrogen dioxide collected over two years, there's probably not a great deal of point of us doing yet another air quality survey because if these numbers don't convince you, then what is going to? But we are very keen on getting as many different groups as we can around this area to do their own. Um, and we're constantly trying to suggest <laughs> that other people do their own monitoring and tracking. Um, I have a question about that. Is there uh, an easy way in which we can start to create a master map of all of the results in I in think there is, and maybe we can talk, we can perhaps uh, talk about this over email. I think really if, if what we start doing is we collated everything in a one format spreadsheet, and then we just had the the sort of latitude, longitude, the, the range that you've got on your, on your diffusion sheet, and then you've got the back to move the maps and average. Because what's concerning, and obviously the, I mean, the, the Greens and others have been involved in things like happily to use my street, but you can go and look at that, and the results will be very different. Sometimes we'll see them a lot lower than what we're picking up on these studies. And then again, there's another set of results that local authorities are commissioning, working with people like Kings, and now, uh, again, yeah. another, <coughs> another variant set of results. So I'm wondering, you know, we almost need to piece together all the evidence together. Yes. There, there is, sorry, there, there is a problem with comparability, maybe. What we have been careful to do so far on all three of us is to take put them up and take them down in the decades. So we can compare like to like with local authority people. Um, what we could do is try and find the subset of people that have done that, so you're at least comparing apples with apples, and then yeah. try and collate all of those together. I think also just trying to nick his point. I mean, it was, it was actually something that we looked at doing. It was a steward job, I think, that, uh, to, that, um, that we were going to get uh, the, the local authorities' um, air pollution studies and try, and try and do something with that. Yeah. But it, it, it was just the, just resources we couldn't really do it. Yet. But and a, a lot of local authorities, I mean, Greenwich um, weren't publishing them for a while. When we started Greenwich, was, Greenwich had its own studies, and they're pretty horrifying as well. But they were basically burying them. Like very comprehensive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lewisham, Lewisham is, is, is quite patchy. Um, yeah. Bexley is, I think, even worse. Um, and, and, and again, north of the river, it's, it's different standards as well. So I think actually that, that, that will be a useful job of work with someone to actually run it across the boroughs. Yeah. I mean, you're on the too. Yeah.
know that there's an estate agent group, so no, I've forgotten, but it was reported recently, or I think I'm <coughs> doing a far more detailed app um, related to when someone wants to so they can look up immediately how to look the street is for that. So there might be something, there might be a strange partnership that could be done with a, you know, with a commercial organisation. Yeah. Like yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think a lot, a lot of times they, they sort of um, extrapolate from the, the local authority placed ones, so they... Uh, we have a little widget on our website that we really need to take off because it quite often says Greenwich area is looking clean. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so just one more quick thing on lessons we learned what we while we were doing this. We uh, what I didn't mention is that when we did this one up here, our third aircraft survey, we did it with a different organisation because we are traitors. And <laughs> uh, we went to mapping for change. And I just, and, and really what I want to say about that is that um, although Mapping for Change did what they said they'd do for us, um, and uh, we, we got a grant with them, uh, we had much less flexibility. We couldn't arrange us, and we, we were asked to put a, a monitoring tube in each of the different kind of grid locations rather than being able to put them where we wanted. Um, we were kind of hoping that Mapping for Change would do a bit of mapping for us, and that hasn't really happened to the degree that, that we hoped. Um, what I will say is working with Network for Clean Air has allowed us to, to use our results um, the way we wanted, and gave us a huge amount of flexibility in where we were going to put the tubes as well, and where we would plan to put them. So I would, I would just say, uh, neither organisation is, is terrible, obviously, and, and Network for Clean Air is obviously wonderful, I am just saying, <laughs> I am just saying in the post. Yeah. <laughs> I am just saying that if you do want to, you know, if you have a very specific set of areas about where you want to put them, you, you might want to think about that. As far as just a very quick minute on what we're going to do with these results and what happens next. So these are useful to us for publicity purposes for the reasons we've already spoken about, for getting out to the press and getting people to be concerned about the issue and, and, and hopefully to join us. Um, but uh, they are also something that we can use to challenge um, the, the consultation findings and to challenge TFL documents when they come forward. Um, the next big challenge that we, that we have is that what you would hope to be able to do with the fact that you have found something illegal happening on your streets is you would hope to be able to do something about that for a law court. Um, however, that would be taking TFL, Greenwich Council, to some sort of judicial review case, and frankly, we have got that too quick to run together at the moment, because we spent it all on those lovely leaflets, which I'm likely to take. Um, and so that's going to be something to, to, to look at in the future. At the moment, we think we are using these for publicity, and as far as we can, through getting politicians to get us the right result through the consultation process. Judicial review, unless somebody drops £100,000 in our laps. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, we'd like to do it, but I don't know that we're going to do it's it. It's 30000 now. 30000 yeah, Bargain! There's a, now a legal limit on how much you can be asked to be on this 30000 up to 30000 So you need to go to like, cut price lawyers on us. <laughs> <laughs> Just as cheap. Um, okay. So you can get any graduates from some kind of name? Yeah, well, I've got your degree. I'll <laughs> just pack it together, we'll be fine. Um, all right, as I was saying, we do have a set of leaflets over there. That's got our website um, and I think our mail address. We've got some business cards as well. We've got some business cards and mail address. We also have the uh, very exciting, most fashionable accessory of this summer, uh, which you're all welcome to take one of these. Um, if you do have any other questions, if I have one about this in a very confusing way, I wouldn't be at all surprised, but do let me know if there is anything else you would like to know about <coughs> Marvellous, please take a bow. <laughs>